Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I thought we'd talk about major app updates for early December, specifically December 8th, 2023. I've been covering these a couple times a month based on the overall app updates. And the first ones are from Apple. Clips is one of their apps that they've had for a little while now, and I don't typically use it all the time, but they had a recent update where it says a new onboarding experience guides users through setting appropriate permissions for camera, microphone, and photo library access. While it's not a major update, they felt the need to push this and then give us more notes than they typically do with iOS updates for some reason. But let's go ahead and tap continue. You'll see required permissions and it says camera access, microphone and photo library. So we can tap allow tap allow for the microphone and then you allow access for your photo library. So that's available now. If you use that app, I'd love to hear from you in the comments as to whether or not it's something you use regularly. Some people say it's underrated at this point. If we go back into the app store and go to arcade, there's been some updates here. The first one is Sonic dream team, which is really nice to see. We also have Disney's Dreamlight Valley. There's also puzzle and dragon story and turmoil plus. So there's some new updates here where they just updated. As you can see, turmoil plus, puzzle and dragon story and some other new ones that have, they've listed as well. So be sure to check those out. I'll be trying out Sonic myself as I didn't realize that was already out. Now the game stray is also available on Apple Silicon Macs Now, now that's not necessarily something we see typically as those type of games are on Xbox and other things, but it's now available in the app store for $30. Now, when it comes to viewing movies and TV apps, that's getting discontinued within iTunes on Apple TV in the next update. Instead, you'll actually use your Apple TV app. And that's something we've basically been doing on iOS for a little while. Now they're just carrying that over to Apple TV. I think you'll see that across all platforms where typically most purchases are done for Apple TV in the TV app. And then outside of that for music, you would go into the music app. So that seems to be something they're sort of unifying across different devices. Also, if you use VPNs a lot, express VPN is now available on Apple TV along with zoom. So if you use zoom for meetings, that should be available on Apple TV as well. If you want to use that directly on the TV, maybe with continuity camera for a messaging app and maybe to have a meeting with someone else. I think that's a great idea. Now, if you use DoorDash, they've updated it to support live activities. So if you have a dynamic Island or you just want to see it on the lock screen on another phone, you can do that nine to five Mac posted a picture of what it looks like. And you can see that there. Let me know if you're using that. Now, Amazon updated their Alexa app. So if you're using Alexa, it has some nice features where they've updated it with an overall redesign. You also have your devices, of course, and then also you can have a little map of your home and then place devices where those are located. So if you want to add a device, actually combine things, put them in a specific room, you can now do that. So it's kind of a nice refresh to the app overall. The makers of the app Halide have a new app coming out that they're working on. Halide allows you to use professional camera options and they're now working on an app they're calling Kino. It says they've announced this the other day and it's a new video app instead of just being photos. So we could see some pro video features maybe that we didn't have before where we'll have it directly on our device. So that's something we're waiting for. If you use Strava to track some of your workouts, or routes that you've been on, they'll be adding messaging capabilities on iOS and Android all the way into early 2024. Some of that has already started to roll out and you'll see a press release from Strava where it says starting today, athletes can coordinate and celebrate active lives on a singular platform with the first phase of its messaging feature. So you can actually talk to whoever you're competing with or get motivation from one another and more. So that's something that's rolling out now. You'll see it says share an activity and or route and more. So that's something I think that will get updated again in early 2024 with more and more features. If you're using podcasts on your iPhone and you have a Tesla, they're adding that to a new update soon. Next week, the holiday Tesla update should be rolling out and podcasts should be included. So you'll be able to use that along with Apple music. That's already there in sort of a similar fashion. So as long as you have a data connection within your Tesla, you'll have that available. Additionally, threads is getting some updates or has had an update. And if you use threads, you now have hashtags. So if we go in, we'll create a new one here. So this is a new thread. And if maybe we use the hashtag, 
You can search for some and they've updated it so that it uses it, but without the hashtag itself. So that's kind of an odd update, but that's something they've updated. And it's also launching in the EU next week, according to the verge. So I know the UK seems to have this, but not all countries do. And it's rolling out throughout. So that's something we're going to see more and more of as we get more features within threads. Another app from meta is messenger. And if you're using messenger, it's now end to end encrypted. They added that this past week and they're also disconnecting this from Instagram. This may or may not be due to the same thing Apple is facing with iMessage and other apps, but it looks like they're disconnecting them where they connected them previously. You won't be able to start or respond to messages in it a little bit later. So that should start rolling out this month, but it's already end to end encrypted. If you don't use messages or X or any of the other apps lately, and you use Mastodon instead, there's some updates there as well. And within Mastodon, there's a new hashtags tab, which is available now. And also if you use other apps that use Mastodon as well, there's some updates there specifically to an app called mammoth. So if you're using mammoth too, there's also one there where mammoth has been updated with a new user interface that looks much nicer. So it has a new user interface with a feeds carousel and more. Let me know which social apps you use in the comments below. Now, WhatsApp, of course, is probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular messaging apps in the world. And it's finally been updated on iOS to support high res images and videos. So if you have that and you have the latest update, you can see the original quality media when you're sending things back and forth. That's definitely welcome as we just didn't have that. And that's one of the downsides of WhatsApp and that's now fixed. Also, you can start voice chats without ringing large groups. So that's something they've added as well. So if you're in a large group, you want to message someone directly, you can do that and it won't ring every one of them. If you use Spotify, there were rumors that you'd be able to use in-app purchases to buy the actual subscription within the app, but apparently they're not going to be bringing that back. This of course would mean Apple would get a cut of these in-app purchases. So it makes sense that they wouldn't bring this back and would take all of the profit through a sign in themselves. Now, if you use Disney plus and Hulu, the app is now bundled on Apple TV. So you can use the Disney bundle and then have them all in one app on Apple TV. I don't typically watch that on my iPhone, but on my Apple TV, it's available now if you want to use that. If you need to remotely connect to one of your devices, screens allows you to do that. And I've actually had screens for some time. It's been updated to screens five, where it has a VNC remote desktop all in one instead of separate apps now. And it's available on iPad, iPhone and Mac. So I've used it across my devices, but now it works universally across them as well. Typically I would just go from one Mac to another if I needed to remote into it. It's got a new UI and has in-app purchases now as well. I don't use it from my iPhone as it's a little bit small there, but has upgraded screens, a little interface here that just makes it easier to use in general. So that's available now. Let me know what app you use for that in the comments below. If you are remoting into something, that's all of the app updates this past week, lots of little changes, interface updates, and more. Hopefully we'll see some much bigger ones next year, but Apple typically halts all of their sort of app submissions toward the end of the year and resumes that early next year. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.